For example, two, it says a store sells two models of a certain brand of Blu-ray DVD players. Because of the demand, it is necessary to stock at least twice as many units of Model X as units of Model Y. The cost to the store for the two models are $200 and $300 respectively. The management does not want more than $4,000 in Blu-ray DVD inventory at any one time, and it wants at most 14 Model X Blu-ray DVD players in inventory at all times and at least two Model Y Blu-ray DVD players in inventory at all times. So Okay, so we need a system of inequalities here. Now, the first bit here says that uh, at least it is necessary to stock at least twice as many units of X as uh, units of model Y. So the X needs to be greater than or equal to twice that of Y. So that would be the first inequality right there. That's probably the hardest one to realize, that if X needs to be at least twice as big as Y, the uh, the the double, the, the two, needs to be next to the Y. Um, a lot of people want to put the two with the X, but here, for example, if you uh, if we said X has to equal, let's say, two Y, then if Y is one, then two times one makes X two, makes X twice as big, and that's what we want: the X to be uh, at least twice as big. Uh, twice as many units of the X, and this is going to do that right there. Uh, the next one, the inventory, well, $200 times each of the X ones plus $300 times each of the Y ones has to be less than or equal to because it says uh, um, it does not want more than $4,000 in Blu-ray DVD inventory. So that means less than or equal to $4,000. 200 times X plus 300 times Y has to be less than or equal to $4,000. Then the last two, at most 14 of the Model X means that X has to be less than or equal to 14 and at least two Model Ys, so Y has to be greater than or equal to two. So these are there are four inequalities. Now, uh, to graph these, we need to put these into the uh, linear inequality sheet, and we would put in our coefficients, like for example, the first one there. Uh, this equation has to be set up in standard form, so the 2y needs to be taken to the left-hand side to give us x minus 2y is greater than or equal to zero. Just subtract 2y from both sides. So this coefficient, uh, the coefficients for this equation would be 1, negative 2, 0. So there's my first inequality. Second inequality coefficients are 200, 300, 4,000. The next inequalities coefficients are uh, 1, 0, 14, because there's no y, and this will be 0, 1, 2, because there's no x. And once you get those into that sheet, it will tell you all the points of intersection automatically. And then what you do is set your start and end on the sheet to be uh, for your x's, looking at how low your x's go. They are as low as uh, looks to be about 4 up to as high as maybe 14 or so. So maybe start your x's from 4 to 14 and your y's go as low as maybe uh, 2 up to about 7. So I've already put those in there. Here's my uh, coefficients typed in. Here's my x values. They go from about 4 as high as 17 and my y's go from 2 to 7. And when you do that, you'll get all the graphs right here. Now you need to know what region is the feasible region, the solution region. Is it in here? Is it in here? Is it over here? You know, where is it? Maybe it's even over here or up here, over here, below here. You know, lots of different places the solution region could be. So we need to know, do we shade above or below these different lines? Well, let's start off with the first inequality right here, which is that blue inequality right there. And that blue inequality uh, came from uh, that first equation or inequality up here about x being greater than 2y. Now, I usually try to uh, substitute a value in like 0, 0, 0 in for x and 0 in for y. But if I try 0, 0 on this, I just get 0 equals 0. So, uh, because the line actually goes through the point 0, 0. So, I got to try another point to see if I need to shave shade above or below the blue line. So if I try in a different point in here, let's say a, a point above that line, and uh, for example, this line is going to go through the origin, so if I try a point like, let's say, 0, 2, which is above that line, or if you want to just look at it in this region, how about this point right here, uh, 4, 4, 
okay, 4-4 four, four is definitely above the blue line. Well, let's try a point above the blue line and see if it, if it works in that inequality. If it does, that means that we shade above that blue line. If it doesn't, it would be shade below that blue line. So I'll try 4-4. Four, four. You can try any point you want that's not on the line. That's why we can't try 0-0. Zero, zero. So trying 4-4 four, four in that inequality is 4 greater than or equal to 2 times 4. Well, that's the same as saying as 4 greater than or equal to 8. No, it's not. Now, 4-4 four, four didn't work, and 4-4 four, four is above the blue line, so therefore the solution region is below the blue line. Okay, so we know it's below the blue. How about this red line here? Are we below the red line? Well, let's see what the inequality is. The inequality is this one, 200x plus 300y is less than or equal to 4,000. If we try a point like 0, 0 in here, which does not uh, lie on that line, it's actually below this line, it's to the left, below this line. Well, is that, um, is that uh, a solution, solution to that inequality? Well, let's, let's see here. If I substitute 0, 0 in here, that would be 200 times 0, 0, plus 300 times 0, 0, and 0 plus 0 is 0, and 0 is less than or equal to 4,000. So that's a true statement. I tried a point that is below this red line. So it's below this red line and below the uh, blue line. And also, I, it said that the y had uh, the x's had to be less than 14, so I know it's to the left of this green line, and it also said that the y values had to be greater than 2, so it's above here. So this is my feasibility region right here, and let's go ahead and show that in the book here, that the feasibility region is that area right there. Now you can answer all sorts of questions like, what is the most amount of $200 uh, Blu-ray DVD players the store can have an inventory that satisfies all the constraints? Well, the number of $200 Blu-ray DVD players was labeled X, and the highest the X can be was 14. So there you go, 14. C, what is the most amount of $300 Blu-ray DVDs? Well, the highest the Y values can go is clear up to this point right there, and that point is actually where the red and blue line intersect, and the Y part of that point of intersection is actually 5 point something. If we look where equation 1 and equation 2 intersect, the Y part of it is 5.7. Now, you can't have a fractional amount of, of uh, DVD players. You can't have 5.7 DVD players, so it's either 5 or 6. It doesn't go up to 6, so the most it could be is 5. See, it doesn't make it up to 6. So the answer to that would be 5. Okay, now this one says, assuming the store has the most amount of $200 uh, Blu-ray DVD players, that's assuming X is as large as possible, what is the most amount that the uh, Y could be, the $300 Blu-ray DVD players? Well, the most the X could be is right here, 14. Now, if that's up to 14, how big can the Y be? Right here. And that's where the uh, red line intersects the green line. So where does the red line intersect the green line? Well, it looks like it's at 4, and I'm almost sure it is, but let's go ahead and check. Red and green, 2 and 3 right there. 2 and 3, the intersection of 2 and 3 right here, and the Y value is 4. So that's the most it could be is 4 for that particular problem. And uh, let's see what else we got here.